press this and you can see this hear this taste this and experience this Press the green button at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809 Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702, but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France, 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hello and welcome to the show. This week we're in Birmingham for some very special presentations to two outstanding individuals who have done so much for the Irish community there. But first, the Irish Consulate in Manchester arranged a special gathering of Irish community and cultural organisations for the north of England at the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester. And we went along to find out what the day was all about. So let me begin by welcoming you all to this uh, special gathering of the Irish community and cultural organisations from across the north of England, which we have entitled Community Connectedness and Sustainability. My name is Sarah Mangan. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Consul General of Ireland for the north of England. Sarah, can you tell me what was the purpose of the conference today? Well, Martin, the real purpose of the conference was just to bring a load of Irish cultural and community organisations together. Because since the consulate was set up just over a year ago, myself and Vice Consul Corina have been out the length and breadth of the north of England, meeting with all the different Irish community organisations that are here. And what really struck us is everybody's doing fantastic work, everybody's very focused on what they're doing, but there was less of an awareness of what everyone else is doing. And we felt that there could be an opportunity there for people to learn from each other, just to have an idea of what else is going on. Um, and 
we don't want to interfere from the consulate's perspective. Everyone's doing great work. But we thought we could use the convening power of the consulate, really just to bring everybody together and see who's around there and see what conversations might stem from that. We are delighted that Minister Colin Brophy, the Minister of State for Overseas Development and Diaspora, agreed to record a welcome and introduction to today's conference. Accord Gael, Consul General. I am delighted to have the opportunity to address you today as you gather as representatives of the Irish community in the north of England. I look forward to meeting you in person in the coming weeks. I wish to acknowledge and express my deepest appreciation of all the groups and individuals who work to promote and sustain the Irish cultural and community activity in the north of England. Karina, so the day opened up with a great turnout of people here and of course you had uh, Minister Colin Brophy uh, do a video message. We did. Um, when we p first put this idea back to Dublin to headquarters and we spoke about the importance with the Irish Abroad Unit of doing a conference like this, I had suggested that maybe Minister Brophy would want to hear about it. So they spoke to him and he was more than happy. He really wanted to do something. He wasn't available to come up today with his calendar, but he wants to contribute in some way because he knows the importance of the Irish diaspora here. So to have him send the video and the personal message, I thought was a really good scene setter for today. And of course you managed to get the new ambassador here to the UK as well. We did, um, and not to say that he has been very, very busy since he took up his post a few weeks ago. There's been one or two things have happened here in Great Britain since then. But this was another thing that he did mark out in his calendar and was found it, that it was really, really important. He's four weeks in the job. It was a way to come up here and meet so many people from the north of England in the Irish community that it was just an opportunity he, fe he felt he really could not miss. Ambassador, welcome to the UK. Thank you very much, it's great to be here. Now I know you've already hit the ground running, I know you've been out among our Irish uh, diaspora already. That's right, I, I'm here in Manchester today at a major conference of all the Irish organisations in the north of England, which has been hosted by our Consul General, our new Consul here in Manchester. I was in Liverpool during the week, which is the, uh, my second home in England, which I had to visit. And uh, we had a lovely event actually just the other night in London for the Lewisham Irish Community Centre, which is 30 years old. I was in Glasgow for a football match, and I think I'm going to Leeds in a couple of weeks' time. So I've been, I've been um, out and about exactly with meeting people in the community. Well, it's great because it's vitally important for our Irish diaspora that they meet you, Ambassador, and that they hear what you've got to say to them and know that they're appreciated for all the great work that's been done here. That's right. Well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really important part of my job as ambassador in Britain to, to meet with the community, to say how much we value the work that the people do, their contribution to Britain, their contribution to Ireland as well, which is, which is sometimes overlooked at home, all the, all the great things that people in Britain have done for, for Ireland as well. And uh, it's just, it's, apart from anything, it's really, really interesting to meet all the people here and hear about all the work they're doing and, and hear some of the old stories as well, which are, some of them are hard stories, but some of them are good old stories as well. There's still work to do, there's still a way to go. Um, There's been some great discussions today and it's good to meet up with colleagues from other Irish centres and organisations to see how they're coping with the, you know, the, the difficulties that we've got lying ahead of us all. It was really interesting to hear different ones all around the country um, telling us their stories about what they're struggling with in their communities. It was and it's, you know, even though we're all from different parts of the world, we're all faced with the same problems at the moment, obviously the you know, the impending cost of living crisis and the heating bills and not much money to go around. So even though, you know, we could be in Birmingham up north, down south, we're all, we've all got the same struggle. So it's good to hear that everybody else is in the same boat, really. The first part of the day was very informative, but then you uh, broke them all into groups and that was really good because I had a lot of good feedback from people who was in some of the groups who were telling me about some of the items that was discussed there like sustainability for all our Irish centres and our cultural work. That's right, I mean the purpose was to have a broad discussion, so the first one was around community and what, uh, what community means, what the Irish community looks like now and then as you say we wanted to break people down because we had a lot of different kinds of organisations here, to give them something that would be useful for them. So we had, as you say, a breakout group on sustainability. We had one around policy and governance and what you need to do to, 
to be able to access funding that's out there, how you continue on your organisation. So yeah, it was great to, to be able to give the, and get that expertise as well from Irish and Britain. So we had Irish and Britain facilitating those discussions because they are the organisation that work on behalf of the Irish community to help them to grow, to sustain themselves. Before we move to our first panel on Irish community, we have a short video to play you, which gives a flavour of the Irish community in this part of the world. And I would like to pay tribute to Martin and Annette Logan, who are responsible not just for putting the video together, but for the hundreds of hours of footage that they have filmed of Irish community events, organisations and individuals across Britain. Martin and Annette have devoted the last few years to their show Irish in the UK TV and their work has produced an enormous output which records for our enjoyment, our information and for posterity so many aspects, so many positive aspects of the Irish community in Britain. You must feel very happy about it because I know you've been organising this and you've put your heart and soul into it over the last couple of months. You've had a really good turnout of people from all over the north of England and the Midlands, London as well. We did. You know, it was the one thing that probably gave me the most sleepless nights because when we started this, the idea of the conference and when, when I was pushing ahead with it, approaching panellists, moderators, everyone was, and, and yourself, don't forget, uh, yourself and I put together a fabulous piece of footage for us. This was all brilliant. It was all coming together. But the big key thing was, would people come? Would they travel? Would they, would they engage? And we had everybody from all organisations represented from Liverpool up to Newcastle, Sheffield, Huddersfield, many from Manchester. And like that, we had representatives in Birmingham and then many colleagues from the embassy in London. So to be honest, I really I couldn't want for better. But it, that, wasn't, that wasn't by accident. We have a great team in the, in the consulate and Ailish work the phones like no one's business. And ringing people, I do not, I won't ever overstate this. The personal touch, you pick up the phone and you ring a person. You can, we do email, but you picking up the phone and ringing a person goes so far. And I think there was a lot of encouragement, I think, come out of the day. There was, and I think this is what happens when you bring people together. Because often we can get bogged down in the issue that's affecting us. And the issue becomes bigger and snowballs. But when you meet somebody else who's got on the same journey, experiencing the same issue, a problem shared is a problem halved, Martin, you know? Yeah. And I think this is what this opened up, the discussions. This is supposed to be the first, it is the first conference of its kind. So therefore, it's the first opportunity for people to do that. And I would expect things to flow from this conference and this not to be the full stop in the picture. Soon to her husband this tale she did tell and begged to call a priest. But priest nor doctor he would call to have this child released. He called for a woman of high renown who knew the fairy ways, who came with pockets full of herbs and ordered Maz O'Connor's piece was outstanding. So she is a composer. As she said herself, she's not traditionally a singer or an actress or a theatre performer, but she has written this piece and composed this piece of musical theatre based on the real life story of the wife of Michael Cleary. As I said, I'm lucky I wasn't a woman in 1895. I think I might have been hung as well. But it really, I think it was so powerful. So she's in a kind of... They're not at the full end, these are some of the songs. They're still in development, but when the musical comes out, I think the whole of the Irish community, if we don't do it, we're doing an injustice to Maz and those performers. This year, of course, this winter, this is when our Irish community has got to uh, step up to the fore, if you like, in our Irish community groups to look after the elderly Irish. Yep, it's going to be a desperate few months for quite a lot of people and obviously our older, vulnerable people in the community will probably suffer more than most. So this is the time when we need people to step up and particularly our volunteers who we, we call on time and time again, we're going to ask them for you know a little bit extra this time. All the problems that we had you know, before this crisis are still there, the, the loneliness, the isolation, the, the mental health problems, you know, and it's just going to be exacerbated now by people who 
as we keep hearing on the news, they're having to make the choice between heating and eating, so that's just going to add to all the problems they've had before. It's time for us to take a break. When we return, we'll be rejoining the Irish Consulate Day in Manchester and we'll be in Birmingham for some very special presentations. See you soon. Press this and you can see this. Hear this. Taste this. And experience this. Press the green button at Ireland.com. Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lala Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, Real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club, a friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Founded in Kilkenny, Ireland in 1702 but lost on a bet on a horse race in Deauville, France 1918. Sullivan's was re-established a few years ago by direct descendants of two great Kilkenny brewing families, the Smithicks and the Sullivans. We're about to embark on our own journey across the United Kingdom. But this time, we won't bet the brewery. <laughs> Sullivan's. Brewing is in our blood. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. This week we're at the Irish Consulate Day at the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester. Over time, Irishness has become dissolved or, you know, masked within, within Britain. And now with the, the political landscape, with things changing, it's more and more important. And we do have, I think we're going to see another wave of younger people coming. Where are they going to go? Who are they going to engage with? And we don't want them being isolated. We want people to be connected in. The same way we want the older people that's already been here. They have a wealth of knowledge. Their institutional knowledge is invaluable. And we need to learn from them. We need to share it. And we need to stay connected. Our Irish community and our Irish centres aren't going as well as they used to because obviously uh, we're all getting that bit older and we've got to plan for the future. That's one of the big challenges we face and some of the people at the conference are explaining what has happened and even in Liverpool the other day, I remember the Irish Centre in Liverpool used to be a beautiful building in the middle of the, the city and things have moved on, as you said, the population has changed, the demographics have changed. The challenges of running these organisations, these centres has changed. Now we're in a beautiful building here in Manchester, so it shows lots can be done, but uh, it's definitely one of the things we're going to have to think about very carefully in the years ahead. There is plenty of funding pots out there, and I think one of the important things is absolutely the Emigrant Support Programme, which is run by the Irish government, has funding opportunities and has funding, but 
Irish community is part of the wider British community and so should be able to access the funding that's available. There's a huge amount of work being done by Irish community organisations that's of benefit to their communities here in Britain and there is funding that is available from councils, from the British government that they have an entitlement to access as well and sometimes it's just making them aware of that and valuing their own contribution and seeing that it is making that contribution and that they are uh, eligible for that funding pot as well. fantastic turnout. We've had at least 100 people come together today to all see how they can support and help all the different communities and the cultural events that we've got going on separately to see how we can all join forces to help each other. I've got to say an amazing thank you to all the staff that we've got here. They all work extremely hard no matter what the event is. Um, but that little bit extra harder today um, with it being a long event. You know, they started early this morning and they're still going now. But it's been a really good successful day. Um, you know, the staff have really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so it's been fantastic. Fantastic turnout. And, you know, this is what we want. We want the centre to be busy and full of life. So the more events like this, it brings people out that wouldn't normally come to the centre. And when they get here they just see how fantastic the venue is and how beautiful it is and um, so hopefully we'll get a lot more utilization from those that are coming round and using it more often. Special thank you to you Charlene today you work very hard along with your staff well done to you all. Oh, thank you Martin it's been it's been a pleasure. There is a absolute typical Irish buffet going in there. There's traditional music and it's done in the way that we know how to do it. It's the pick up the instrument, it's the sit amongst your own peers and everyone join in. And there's nothing but happy faces in that bar, Martin, and I tell you, it's leading to this one very, very happy face. It was great to see so many organisations there on the day sharing ideas and information. And a big thank you to the Irish Consulate in Manchester for organising the event. Now John Fitzgerald in Birmingham is very well known for his outstanding work with the Irish community down the years. And of course he ran a wonderful Irish shop at the Birmingham Irish Centre. And Brendan Farrell was the voice of the Irish people in Birmingham for so many years with the great work that he has done with the Irish Post. Sadly, Brendan passed away only a few weeks ago. Well, recently we caught up with Morris Malone and Kieran Healy when they made a presentation to John Fitzgerald and to Brendan Farrell's daughter, Marie. John. Many congratulations on receiving this beautiful award today from the Irish community in Birmingham. Thanks very much. Thanks, Martin. I was surprised to hear it, but and uh, I couldn't come up to the park to receive it because I'm not fit to travel, you know, and uh, so it's a bit awkward. So it's great that you went to the trouble to come over here and present me with that. Well, why shouldn't we? You've done so much for the Irish community here in Birmingham down the years and you've arranged so many great nights and of course you had a fantastic shop at the old Irish Centre. That's right. It was, it was amazing really. I ran it for 42 years. It was great really to have all that stuff, Martin. And uh, y you know, you got whatever people wanted. Yeah. And I had great suppliers in Ireland do you miss being in the shop and all the customers that used to come in that used to know you? I do, yeah. And uh, it's sad, you know, the, the new early centre opened in King's Heath. But when you think of all the people that used to come to Digbit, they are not there anymore. Yeah. Well, I see them down the green now and again, but somebody will, will know me from the early centre. Yeah. And uh, they always have a little word. I finished only then my last concert I ran with Derek Ryan and that was only a week before Patrick's Day when, when that disease came and I was lucky enough and I came out at the right time. Marie, we just saw Morris Malone there presenting you with a beautiful presentation on behalf of your dad. 
You did, and I'm so happy to receive it on behalf of my dad. It means a lot to me and my family, and I'm so proud of what he's achieved. Now, of course, your dad's passed away very suddenly, and I know you're still very much in shock. Yes, we're all in shock, myself and all of Brendan's family. Um, he passed away peacefully on the 24th of September. Um, a big shock to everybody involved. Um, it's still quite raw, but I must say, on behalf of me and all of Brendan's family, I would like to thank everybody for all the well wishes, everything. It really, really means a lot to us and my family. He was a long time working for the Irish Post. He started when he was quite young, I think it was 1970 he started working there. And yes, he went everywhere. He absolutely dedicated his life for the Irish Post. Once you heard the name Brendan Farrell, especially in the Irish community, everybody knew who you were talking about. And he loved his job. He loved it. I, I ran the Birmingham Irish Festival for 16 years. I remember Foss and Allen playing football <laughs> in the hall itself. I decided I'd do two big ones in the Alexander Stadium. The first one, uh, I lost about five grand on it. I had people like the Wolf Tones and, and those on it, yeah. and Bob Brawley comparing it, and the dancers as well. So I thought, I'll do another one. So yeah. I did one the next year, and it, in the middle of August, it rained all day. Yeah. I lost 20,000 on it. Morris, we just saw Kieran there making a lovely presentation to John Fitzgerald. Of course, hugely deserved. It says John's been an absolute pillar of the community for, for a long, long time. And the service that he's given not only to the Irish community, but to Birmingham and the Midlands, absolutely fantastic. True legend. And of course, I know all you guys wanted John and a few other people to receive their awards in front of as many people as possible at the Park Festival, but it just wasn't to happen. It was. It was a shame. We Hopefully we were trying to get John there and Brendan and, and Queenie and Pat O'Neill, and unfortunately due to their health, John and Brendan weren't able to make it, but it's great that we've still been able to do the presentation to them. Oh, there you go. Oh, hang on, am I supposed to just turn them like this? Brendan was a, he was a character. <laughs> he was a personality and during lockdown he, he, he struggled, but we made sure we, we kept visiting regularly and, and bringing out food parcels to him and just to, to keep him, because people like Brendan suffered more than most, but, you know, he's, uh, yeah, we're all, we're all very sad today. Hundreds, if not thousands, of people will want to come and pay their respects to Brendan because he touched so many lives. What do you think he'd say today if he was here to receive this beautiful honour from the Owens family and all the Irish community here in Birmingham? Oh, I think he'd be so proud of what he's achieved. I'm proud of what he's achieved. And I think he'd just say thank you so much to everybody. Thanks a million. Salon. Now, John, I know you wanted to say a few thank yous to a few people for, rece for you know, you actually receiving this yeah. award today. For, first of all, I want to thank my wife, Margaret, and my family. We've got seven children, and three of the lads are in Australia, Jersey, and Germany. And the three, two girls are down in South Wales. The charity nights that I ran, I raised over 100,000 for local charities. Right. And without people like Michelle and Bernie Alcott, Eddie and Peggy Fallahy, Margaret Coogan, Father Taff, Queenie and Noel Mulvey, Bob Brawley and Carl Chin, the two who all helped. I wanted to thank all those and dedicate this presentation to them. You've done well, John. You've been a, an absolute outstanding person to the Irish community here in Birmingham. Thanks. Honestly. I'm, I'm glad to be able to help him and to be support him. It was great to see John Fitzgerald receive his award for all the outstanding work that he has done down the years for the Irish community. And of course, Brendan Farrell will be so sadly missed by us all, not just in Birmingham, but for everybody that knew him all around the UK. May he rest in peace. Now that's about it for this week. We'll be back 
next Thursday evening with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Until then, take good care.